Um, but we, we mostly go for Linux because it's easier for us to support and we're pretty limited little IT service. So um, they don't get any viruses that way. Uh, particularly the clients, when we hand out our laptops, we put Linux on them. And um, uh, sometimes we've handed out Windows ones and they come back two weeks later riddled with viruses. <laughs> um, and we just we were spending a lot of time cleaning, cleaning them up. So um, now we hand out Linux and they don't come back. It's great. Um, so we have, um, we've been in the process of converting, converting everything to Civi. Um, uh, we've started off with, um, so, so our main systems are the supporter, we've got a supporter database, which is our donors and volunteers and supporters, um, uh, with about 10,000 people in it. Um, and then we've got a client database, um, which also has about 10,000 people in it. Um, and the client database has been written over a number of years by a volunteer. Um, and he wrote it in Visual Basic, ASP.NET, and um, it's it's been good for what it does, um, but it's a little bit hard to maintain, and it's very hard to, for us to extend. Um, so we do what we can with it, but it's um, it was never really a fully featured casework um, database case management system. Um, so. Uh, we're trying to get get off that. That's our next step. What the first step was to um, convert our donor and supporter um, volunteer database, um, what we call our supporter database. Um, that was on a Blackboard um, system called eTapestry, um, which is pretty nasty. If any of you have seen it or haven't seen it, I don't recommend it. Um, they, um, <laughs> um, I won't tell you nasty stories about it, but um, I don't recommend it. Um, so we moved that successfully to Civi and launched on the 1st of July. Um, so now we take all, all our payments through Civi uh, and um, um, they get processed by eWay. Um, and uh, we do our, all our supporter communications, all our uh, mailing appeals and um, uh, volunteer communications, volunteer management and, and um, keep a list of staff and so on in there. Um, and we also run a, a test version of our of, of our Civi Drupal site. So we run Civi on Drupal. Um, we also have a WordPress site, um, and the idea was that we would migrate across from WordPress, migrate all the website content over to Drupal, um, which we may do eventually, or we may shift Civi back to WordPress at some point. Uh, we haven't really decided, um, but at the moment, We've got WordPress over here. We've got Drupal over here with a with a subdomain, um, secure dot asylum seekers center, which uh, works quite well because <laughs> when you click through to any form, it comes up as secure dot asylum seekers center, which looks quite nice. Um, and the the biggest challenge wasn't very big, which was to um, match up the themes close enough so that people didn't feel like they were being redirected to a fraud site. Um, so. Um, so we we have a testing copy, as I was saying, of um, of the the full CV Drupal experience um, uh, that we can just mess around in and test out our extensions and uh, break things. Um, so so we try to use that if we're if we're doing something nasty in the back end, um, we do it in test first, and then and then we reproduce it in um, in production. Um, so for our development team, we've got um, 1.6 IT staff, including myself, um, over I think four people. So, um, and we also have a wonderful pro bono developer who's been he spent six months with us before we launched, um, and he's going to spend probably another six months to a year um, with us while we convert over the client database as well. Um, that's Stephen Garrett. Probably a few of you know him. Um, um, and um, we do our, get our hosting and support with Agileware, um, who've been very good actually. So um, we rely on them for the for the hard, basically for the harder technical stuff. Um, get the occasional bug, um, and sometimes we introduce our own bugs by doing something we shouldn't do. 
Um, so, the, um, I'm going to talk a bit about how we use CV. Um, so, so it's, I guess it's primarily at this stage it's contact management. So, um, as I said, we have about 10,000 10, donors and supporters, um, and um, we categorize them in various ways um, using um, various um, types and attributes. Um, and we'll be adding we'll be adding in the clients to that rather than having a separate database for them. Um, we've been toing and froing about whether to have a supporter database and a client database um, to keep them separate. For instance, um, for security reasons, the client data is more sensitive than than the supported data um, because it has all sorts of, um, for instance, health information and demographic information that that can be quite intrusive because um, it's required for, for liaising with the, the various agencies and departments, um, filling out forms and legal advice and so on. Um, but in the end, we've decided that they're better together uh, because it ena enables us in particular to maintain one system rather than two. Um, and it also allows us to um, a, a more unified approach. So, so we'll be treating everybody primarily as a contact and as a person, and then on top of that, they might be a client or they might be a volunteer or they might be a client and a volunteer. Um, so we don't want to have to update their data in two places, um, and we want to be able to form relationships between um, anybody in the database. Um, I'll talk... I think I'll be talking a little bit more about relationships. I'll see how we go. Um, so um, I want to talk a little bit about how we categorize um, our contacts. Um, so so I made a little list. We we use um, we use a lot of the built-in fields, of course. So for contact details and contact preferences, um, we use uh, quite a few custom fields. Um, so for instance, if we Supporters can be marked as uh, um, various types of key supporter, um, uh, VIPs of this type or another. Um, we track anybody who's um, interested in making a bequest or who has made a bequest. Um, and um, we use um, contact types. Um, so the main contact types in CV are organizations, individuals, and households, as many of you will know. Um, they spell organization with a Z in CV, um, but you can actually fix that to some extent with, um, I can't remember what the term is, it's like text replacement or something. Um, um, so, um, so we use all of those and then we use a bunch of contact subtypes underneath that, um, which as I'll discuss we've been trying to rationalize. Um, so the contact subtypes that we definitely use are vol volunteers um, and clients and um, staff members. Um, so for those of you who don't, who don't know, once you add a contact subtype, it means that you can define custom fields that only show up on that custom subtype. Um, so for instance, we've got 400 volunteers, 10,000 supporters and 10,000 clients. We don't really want all of our 10 or 12 um, volunteer fields showing up empty on all of those 20,000 people, we just want them showing up for the 400 volunteers. Um, so, so we do that by making volunteer contact subtype, and then we've defined a bunch of custom fields, custom field set, um, and we, we attach that to volunteer subtype. Um, we also, we use quite a few groups. Um, so for instance, we have groups for the different uh, staff teams and for staff generally. Um, Organizations might be might be in our government organizations group, um, and um, and there's a handful of um, uh, mailing lists um, that we use uh, groups for, and then we use smart groups for a lot of things. So, um, for instance, uh, people can make regular donations. Um, we did we did try to track our regular donors with a checkbox, saying, "Are you a regular donor or aren't you?" Um, and then we upgraded that to a status field saying, are you a former regular donor or an active regular donor? And we noticed in both of those cases, they would just go rusty. Um, and so now we track them with a smart group looking for regular donations that they've made in a 
in a fixed period, um, or looking for an active payment record, if the which links through to eWay. Um, so it's a little bit technical how to do that, but it's not difficult, um, and it works very very well. So now we have these lovely smart groups giving us an accurate picture of who's a current regular donor, who was a regular donor until just recently, and who's a former regular donor who's lapsed for more than six months, for instance. Um, and we communicate with them differently. Um, we also have smart groups for, for instance, workplace givers, um, who are people whose contact details we've got through, through the workplace giving program. Um, so they don't necessarily have a lot to do with us, and we haven't necessarily had much communication back and forth, um, but we want to track who they are. Um, and, um, and we track our major donors and various other categories of donors, donors um, using smart groups, watching how much they've donated in, in fixed periods. Okay. Um, so we've got... Um, um, uh, Another another way we um, um, select uh, categorize our um, contacts is we use a tagging system. So in Civi, you can you can attach kind of arbitrary number of tags to your contact records. Um, the way tags normally work, they're like checkboxes. So you can basically you can turn them on and off, um, define a bunch of tags, and then say, for instance, this person's a regular donor or this person's a major donor. Um, problem with that um, is that they go out of date um, and you have to keep updating them and checking them manually or in some other fashion so so we don't do it that way we use um, we use a bunch of smart groups to track um, who's in what category and then we use a, um, a custom extension um, that basically reads through a list of smart groups and tags and aligns them um, and uh, runs on cron um, so it'll run perhaps every couple of hours um, and update all the tags um, so that so that um, they show up on the contact summary page in a bright color. Um, and we've, in order to stop people turning them on and off manually, we've disabled the tags tab, um, which is not hard to do. You can just turn it off, um, and um, it means that, for instance, our regular donors and our major donors and so on. Because we're using smart groups to track them, you don't have to click through to their groups tab and then click on the smart groups and wait for the smart groups to populate and then see if they're in the major donors group. Um, it'll just show up on their contact page saying in you know bright pink, they're a major donor. So when you open up their record, this is particularly popular with the fundraising department. Um, they open up someone's record to call them about their recent donation and they can immediately see that they're a regular donor or a major donor or a requester or whatever it happens to be without having to without having to dig around too much. Um, and the tags are also searchable, um, which can be quite convenient. Um, um, to, I mean, you can say, are they in such and such a group? But now you can also say, are they? do they have such and such a tag um, in your searches and reports? Um, so we send communications with... Um, through our mailing lists using our smart groups and normal groups. Um, okay, I'm using up my time. <laughs> it started a bit late. Um, um, we, um, we use various templates. We haven't started using Mosaic yet, but we're interested. Um, um, for payments and accounting, we use eWay. Um, we have quite a nice system with, with a reconciliation report where we um, Drop all our drop all our Civi payments for the month into a spreadsheet. We drop all our eWay payments into the into another tab on that, and use formulas to line it up and find the exceptions, um, and then compare that with our zero zero totals um, from our zero accounting system. And um, it works really nicely. Um, we we run fundraising appeals um, in the usual manner. We we segment the database using smart groups mostly um, into various categories, and we. Um, track using campaigns and approach codes and um, payment forms. Um, we've got a quite a nice system for attaching a, a code to the payment form and using the same form so that we can use different URLs that will automatically put an approach code on the payments made through that form. Um, and, um, and then we import a bunch of payments and contact data from third-party sites 
um, Give Now and Everyday Hero and Grassroots and various other fundraising platforms. Um, and we use input, we use spreadsheets for that. Um, dump them into the spreadsheet, have it automatically kind of massaged into a CV friendly format, and then we use a CV input and we get volunteers to run that um, every month. Um, and um, we're going to be using CV for case management um, for uh, all sorts of types of cases, for, for instance, finding accommodation, finding jobs, intake assessment. This will be for clients. Um, and we're also going to use that for households. So you can attach a case to an individual or you can attach it to the whole household. So it might be the whole household is seeking accommodation or it might be that an individual is seeking employment. So sometimes a case will go on a household and sometimes it will go on an individual member. Um, and we use profiles to update um, members of the same household. So you can, uh, for instance, if you need to update visa requirements, we'd, we'd use a profile bring up all the members of a particular household, there might be seven kids, um, a couple of uh, parents, um, and we need to set a bunch of fields the same on each one, and we don't want to have to enter that each time, so the profile you can enter at the top, click, I want this to be the same for all my members of the household. Um, we're going to be using CV event for all sorts of things, we haven't started yet. Um, um, if, for instance, even for English classes and um, we have various annual events, corporate volunteering days and so on. Um, uh, I won't say much about reports, but just that we use a lot of them. <laughs> um, and um, we do a lot of um, searches, so advanced searches, filters. Um, we use the search builder a lot um, and the include exclude search. And I don't know what we would do that without that one. Um, it makes it makes segmenting the database for appeals possible, where otherwise it would be really difficult. Um, and um, uh, we've dis um, we sometimes use direct access to the X SQL if we're really st stuck um, for doing a particular search, or we'll just export heaps and heaps of people into a spreadsheet and use filters, uh, and then import in batches. Um, to mark custom fields saying they're in such and such a segment according to the spreadsheet data. Um, so um, we track material donations, so people donate food, and toiletries and computers. Um, we, we fill in a form which raises an activity um, um, for them saying that they've donated such and such an item um, and it raises another activity saying um, um, please please call this person to thank them or send them an email or something. And then we mark that activity as completed once it's done and that activity pops up as a report. I'm going to have to wrap up. So I won't tell you much more about um, relationships, but um, um, so just to conclude, um, we're using CV very successfully to manage all our donors and supporters and our volunteers and running appeals, sending communications and soon we'll be managing it for our client cases, um, with the exception of health, which is in a separate database, um, a GP management system. Um, and the more we use it, the more we like it, and the more ways we find to use it and to automate it and improve it. And it is so, so much better than the systems that it's replaced. It's, it's really fantastic, and we're very grateful to the community for producing it. Um, and our tagging extension is on GitHub. And thanks very much. <laughs>